Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So we talked about hype, and I want to ask you about um, artificial intelligence. The claim is that artificial intelligence is going to eventually produce, you know, artificial Galileo. And I've actually worked with, since I now have the text, all 1 million words of his dialogue in printed form uh, for the first time to make the audiobook. I am going to uh, put it into GPT-3 and see if I can teach him QED or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. But, but to just see what, what will come out of it, because I think it'll be interesting. But my... My assumption is that be, just because uh, computers can beat any human at chess, it doesn't mean they can create the game of chess. In other words, uh, they, can't, they can solve a Rubik's Cube, can they invent a Rubik's Cube? But in the essence of physics, the, no, the claim is that it's just a, you know, Max Tegmark has written about this, you know, it's just a matter of time before we have artificial Feynman. It doesn't matter whether the information is processed by carbon <clears throat> atoms in neurons and brains or by some other kind of atoms in machines we build ultimately. There's no law of physics saying that we are the smartest kind of quark blobs that can possibly exist. So the bigger question is, is to me is not whether it's possible to blow away human intelligence with machines, but just whether we will be smart enough to figure out how to do it. And, and hey, we just had the NeurIPS conference, which is sort of like the, the AI rock concert of the year, which keeps growing exponentially in size. And it, it's just quite mind boggling how fast this field is progressing. I'm not, you know, just a few years ago, robots couldn't walk properly. Now, today we have a viral video of uh, robots dancing in the new year <laughs> at Boston Dynamics. Not long ago, you know, we didn't have self-driving cars. Now we have self-landing rockets, thanks to Elon. And not long ago, we didn't have machines that could even beat us at the Asian board game of Go. And now just the other week, Google DeepMind came out with the latest, the Mu Zero, which not only crushes us at Go and chess and Japanese chess shogi, but also in all the Atari games from the old times, pretty much, mm. without even being told the rules. <laughs> so things are happening fast. Do you know what Einstein called the happiest thought of his life? Not fantasy, but the happiest thought of his life, uh, Lawrence? I, I seem to remember it, but remind me, as I know since. Was that if you were in free fall, you'd experience zero acceleration. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So gravity would yeah, be equivalent yeah. to acceleration. He called that the happiest. Now, how can a computer, and that's what led to GR, you know, in some sense. Um, how can a computer, A, know what it feels to free fall, B, oh. know what uh, know what happiness is in this context. And C, how can they take that intellectual leap? If you're just taking data from Newton and showed the perihelion of Mercury anomalously advances, how would you possibly get from that, you know, lacunae in the data to a new way of thinking about a fundamental force? So well, those are my opinions. What well, do you think about I the think prospects? I think you're being short-sighted, but I also think these other mm -hmm. people are being ridiculous. I mean, okay. first of all, anytime you hear people predict things about things we don't know anything about, they call themselves futurists often. That's when you, those are people you shouldn't listen to. Um, <laughs> and um, all, almost invariably, they miss the important stuff. I mean, we were supposed to be in flying cars, in, you know, when, in the 1950s, but when they talked about 2000, but they didn't talk about the internet. Uh, well, first of all, we don't even know what intelligence is in some deep sense. But but you're making the assumptions that, you know, I can't input all of the, um, the sensory uh, uh, data input that you'd feel in free fall. And, and for me... I see no barriers ultimately to what you would call a, uh, an artificial consciousness. But it's not the problem with artificial intelligence is not artificial in any sense. It's it's creating a, a an electronic version of a, a system that arose haphazardly by biology, and 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 biology did it very effectively because it had a long time to do it. Um, so I don't see any barriers to ultimately what you would call computers being conscious. I I ultimately don't see, computer Feynman is not the way, way of putting it, but what I, I, I am interested in a general artificial intelligence in, in, in those, using those language, which I don't like, um, mm -hmm. precisely for the same reason I think that Feynman mm -hmm. was, which is, mm -hmm. I would like to know what an intelligent computer, what physics questions an intelligent computer would find interesting. And there's not, it's not at all clear to me that they'd be the same questions. It's mm -hmm. to me, it's just like wanting to know about an alien intelligence. 
I would love to have an alien intelligence because I'd like to learn a lot about what they've learned about the world and how they think about it because it would illuminate, presumably, potentially a completely different way of thinking about the world than I'm used to. If we allow data to come in, we will discover something new. Okay, so the self-fulfilling prophecy is if you don't search, you will never find. And on the other hand, if we do search, we will find something. And I believe that within my lifetime, there is a chance that we will get our hands on a technological relic from another civilization. And that would be mm. amazing. So I have <laughs> something to wait for. Not the response of my colleagues, not uh, flattery from people around me, um, rather allowing nature to give me uh, new knowledge by mm. looking at it. And that's all. And I don't need anything more than that. So mm -hmm. I don't see it as, a, say, a threat in that sense, nor do I see it as a panacea. I see it, I think, in the long run as kind of inevitable, but not in any, but I mean long run. I don't think all of, AI is an area that's incredibly hyped. You're absolutely right. Computers can beat people at chess, but they can't, but robots can't yet really effectively fold laundry. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so, um, you know, it, it, this notion of, um, you know, uh, around the corner, the, that's going to happen, I think is ridiculous. Oh, I find it fascinating that Plato and others, going back to Plato in, in full circle, around the time that writing was first invented, totally decried writing because they said it would ruin storytelling. Mm. Storytelling would be over because people wouldn't have memories, they wouldn't be able to do this stuff, and of course it didn't happen. And as computational systems become more capable in different areas, um, it will change things. But I don't see... Um, I, I guess I don't see the same bear. I think you're just imposing the present on the future. Who knows what the origins of creativity is, except it's making connections at some level between disparate things in some way. I don't see any barrier ultimately to a, a computer with sufficient sense input from a variety of things to be able to not understand what, what it, how happy it is to fall in the absence of gravity. That we feel pain in the everywhere we f we feel pain in the brain <laughs> okay yeah. the, not in the fingers not when that ones that are being burned it's in the brain that it's created and mm. and it's and it's created because of a whole bunch of biochemical reactions that relate to sensory input and i don't see that electrochemical reactions or electrical reactions related to similar sensory input can't create the same feelings in that artificial brain but it's this fundamental physical philosophical question which none of us mm -hmm. can ever really answer which is, how do mm -hmm. I know that your pain is the same as my pain? How do yeah, I know exactly. that you're green, even though I'm colorblind, that your green is the same as my green? <laughs>